Where do I begin? <laughs> I felt like a very lucky lady for the entire month that I was shooting. I mean, these guys are incredible. Like, funny, talented, warm gentlemen. And I got to witness, like, real comedic genius at work. It was amazing. So, Genevieve Aubois is uh, the attaché between the troopers and the Mounties, so the, the French and the Americans. And um, she gets involved with them, let's just say. <laughs> I think it's so inspiring. I think it's so cool that an entire group of people, of fans, were like, essentially made this film happen. And I feel like, like that's the power that we have. Like, if you want something, you can get it. And the fact that people wanted to have another Super Troopers, they got it. Thanks to them, we were able to make this movie. It's so cool. I just hope everybody laughs and has fun and is like, I hope that they're not disappointed at all because there's so much anticipation. I hope that they're really happy with it. And I just hope that people you know, we're living in some pretty dark times right now, so hopefully this gives like a little needed lightness and laughter. That would be awesome. Well, it's amazing. It's actually, uh, you know, obviously we did a crowdfunding campaign and we raised $4.6 million over the course of 30 days. And uh, it was so fun because some of the perks were the fans who actually got to come to set. So when we have big crowd scenes in the movie, those are actually people that help contribute to make the movie. And so it really was a collaborative effort with the fans to make it, which is exciting. And a lot of people are going to be here tonight are going to be people that contributed also they are going to be here. The plot, so after 9-11 after we read that the United States reassessed some borders. And, uh, you know, it probably wasn't quite as much as we exaggerate a little bit, but we, in our imagination, imagine that the border is reassessed and a Canadian town gets absorbed into America. And so they need an occupying force to go police it. And so as being a Vermont Highway Patrol, we get sent up there to, tr to, have, to police the French-Canadian town that has now become American uh, against their will. And so it creates a little tension and a lot of good plot for comedy. Uh, just getting to work with Rob Lowe was very memorable for us, having been a fan ever since from Outsiders and Young Blood, and then getting to work with him. And he's also been in some iconic comedies with Tommy Boy, uh, Wayne's World, and so it was really fun to get a chance to work with Rob Lowe. So I play uh, one of the Canadian Mounties, who are the adversary to the super troopers in this film. And there's a huge plot twist that's got to be kept under wraps. It's top secret, so I can't disclose it now. You'll know more in 15 minutes. But essentially, it's the, it's the square off between the Mounties and the super troopers. It's a battle royale. Um, there were a lot of stories from set, uh, not that I can fully share on camera. I've, I've done the guys, uh, Steve and Kevin's podcast a couple times where we broke down us getting kicked out of hotel rooms and various bars and restaurants in the Boston area. So those are all archived there. You know, it's been such a long road. You know, the, the whole, you know, we had a crowdfunding campaign and then we shot one week of the movie, then we went back and we raised the rest of the money, then we shot the... Raise the I mean, it was just has been a long time. So the movie turned out well, and I'm finally excited to unleash it on the world. Well, Fox said, you know, we'll make, we'll release the movie, but all of our money is locked up in capes and tights. So, you know, if you don't have superheroes, go find the money yourself. So we went to crowdfunding Indiegogo, and you know, it was a risk because if they didn't fund it, we weren't. Everyone was going to say nobody wants to see it, and so you know, we press go and. 54,000 people gave us, you know, 2 million in, in 24 hours and 4.6 after that. So it was, it was, you know, it was a, uh, hey, there's, a, not, uh, there's an audience. So it was good. Uh, you know, I'm good friends with these guys and we travel a lot. We do stand-up shows. So it's just like more days together. We've, been, we've met each other when we were 18. So it's, you know, we're kind of tight. No, I would say so. But I mean, we see each other all the time. So yeah, just more hanging out. Well, basically, uh, it's a border comedy, right? Where we, they discover that there's a problem with the border. 
the Canadian Vermont border is in the wrong place. And so they, they realize that there's a town in Canada that should be in American soil. So they send a transition force in to help those Canadians become Americans, and that's us. So, pretty good. Uh, I play Rod Farva, who's kind of the jerk of the crowd. He's that guy that everyone has in their office who uh, is kind of the ass. And so uh, in the first movie, it was a very simple presentation of the jerk. And now in this movie, he's kind of spun off the rails a little bit. Like, my character's crazy in this movie. But that's okay, right? That's the fun part. Well, we have five guys, and we've been together for many years. We went to college together. And uh, I think we've learned how to do it, how to collaborate. And uh, there's still fights. There are some fist fights in there. But for the most part, you know, we get together, we throw some jokes around, and one guy has to go off and type it up, and then bring it back to the other guys, and we just keep going. And it took so long to make this movie that we did a ton of drafts for this movie in order to get there. So, um, there are a lot. Like I, I actually have a, a a kissing scene with Steve Lemmy, with Mac. We have a little moment, and uh, it was one of those moments where you be careful what you write because we wrote it and then realized we had to shoot it. And so all the time it was us circling the day on the calendar about when that day was going to come. And then ultimately we had to do it. And it went delightfully. It was great. <laughs> right. So we wanted to make something that felt not like some crazy, gigantic, bigger, better version of Super Troopers, but more like just more of what people liked about the same. Um, so we didn't do anything radical. We basically just said, Hey, imagine if they had to now go about like 10, 15 miles north over the border into Canada. I mean, they were always right on the border in the first movie, but you can just send them over the border and then suddenly you've got a whole new world without like going that far away. So we've got these guys being asked to go up to a town that has been deemed, even though it was always Canada, now it's being called America, and we're the guys who are sent to come in there and make everybody be American, which is the worst job in the, in the world. And, and they don't want us there, and especially the French Canadians who have their own culture. So Foster in the first one, his, you know, the sort of the, the tag on Foster was always like a lazy civilian trapped in a cop's body. And so I think even, you know, these years later, Foster is still a guy who would just as soon be like shoes off, fishing, even when it's time to do the job and it's time to be a police. And he doesn't like pulling people over. So he's actually, he hates this assignment more than anybody else because you're making people live by new rules. And that's the last thing this guy would ever want to do. I mean, it was crazy. There was just, there were, you know, grizzly bears running around. There, there were, we had all these new actors and people like Rob Lowe and uh, Will Sasso, uh, great comedians. And so it just all felt like there were so many other funny, funny people and crazy stuff on set that was, you know, we just kind of let it, let it happen, you know? He's a small town French Canadian mayor, former hockey player, who uh, doesn't have a lot going on between the ears. Um, and it's just a great opportunity to have so much fun, which I did. I mean, it should have been illegal, the amount of fun that I had making the movie. Well, one of the things I love about the movie is the fans literally paid for this movie. This is a, a crowd-funded movie. People demanded it. They go, we love it. We want you to make it. They put up the money, and, and the Broken Lizard guys went out and made it. So it's really cool to be part of something that, that the fans have a literal invested interest in. It was so collaborative, you know. I mean, there was a great script, but a lot of it we also made up on the fly and had fun doing. And 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 it's it's really gratifying to see that some of my idea, a lot of my ideas, made it into the cut. So they're just great collaborators. They really are, and they're funny as hell. Uh, it's been great. I work uh, working with Broken Lizard is one of the greatest things in the world. We have a lot of fun. I love making movies with them. This has been a long time coming, 16 years, and we're finally here, and so we're excited. Uh, it's fantastic. It's like a, a dysfunctional family and uh, a lot of fun. They're just the most amazing guys in the world to work with. Uh, so it's based on a true story, uh, which is that the uh, the U.S. and Canadian governments do a little border reassessment, 
and discover that Canada actually owes a little bit of land to the United States. And there just happens to be a small, like a small Canadian town that is going to become turn Canadian. There's a small Canadian town that is going to become American, and we are the sorry dudes who have to come and patrol that area and basically teach these people the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem and all that stuff. So we're basically an occupying force. Uh, I play uh, Officer McIntyre Womack. Basically, if I wasn't a cop, I'd be in jail. I'm the crazy one. I'm the wild one. Yeah. It has been a long time coming. Uh, we pitched this movie, I think, to the studio back in 2008. Uh, we started writing in 2009. Um, we were having a hard time getting finance, and the studio said they would distribute the movie, but we had to raise the money for it. But I think by the time we got around to it, that maybe there was a fear that the fans had disappeared and the DVD market, which is where Super Troopers, the first one, really rose uh, to, to become what it became. Uh, the DVD market was done, basically, and so I think people were skeptical, they thought the fans were not there anymore, and so um, the Indiegogo campaign was incredible because the fans showed up, I think 54,000 people contributed, uh, we raised you know, four and a half million dollars, and beyond the fact that it actually started the production on the movie, it also showed the studio that the fans were still out there, and then when we went to complete the financing with other financiers, it showed them that there was still a fan base out there so it was uh, you know and it also made us feel good and also it's nice because it's actually really connected us with the fans you know you hear a lot of rock stars say like we couldn't do it without you and the truth of the matter is this was something where the fans came together and they gave the money and they produced the movie and so it's really a group effort so it's uh, it's it's humbling and it's cool you know I have uh, I'm trying to figure out which I think was more uh, terrifying or intimidating, acting with a live grizzly bear or acting with Rob Lowe. Because the grizzly bear will just kill you. Rob Lowe is just terribly good looking. And you know, I, would, I, I have a scene with Rob Lowe and while he was doing his lines, I was thinking to myself, oh my god, I'm acting with Soda Pop. This is Rob Lowe. This is Youngblood. This is the guy who I was watching and who all the girls in my high school were talking about. Like, it's Rob Lowe, and I'm standing here like three feet away from him, and we're having an argument about something. And then, you know, the, the scene would finally wrap, and my hands would be trembling. I'm like, oh, oh my god, that was Rob Lowe. And I, I was more calm with the grizzly bear than I was with Rob Lowe, which I found fascinating. I feel like the record-breaking amount of money they made for the sequel was like, I guess, unprecedented, right, in the in the world of Indiegogo. And I was really impressed with that, and the fact that all those guys, a lot of them, and women who contributed, got to come to set and hang out, and some of them were in the movie. You know, the Super Troopers are back, and uh, they're in Canada. And, and the part of Canada that they're in is soon to be America, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they, they're all back together for a very special assignment. They have to go into evil Canada, and I'm allowed to say that because I'm from Canada. So, uh, and, and they encounter evil Canadians, which I think it's about time to peel, the, peel the, the blanket back on that and let the rest of the world know that, sure, we're polite, uh, sure, we like to enunciate when we speak, but uh, we're not all good people. I mean, not me, of course. I'm a saint. Um, I play one of the evil Mounties who are, you know, sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, showing up, uh, sort of, you know, uh, definitely threatened by the troopers, threatened that they're in Canada uh, on our on our Canadian soil, and uh, and it turns into a bit of a, yeah, they don't they don't get along uh, at all until there's a greater evil uh, to deal with, and then perhaps they, they uh, you know, team up and stuff. Well, no, it's, it's unbelievable because, you know, it's one of those situations where, you know, I say it's like, it's like, you know, the good guys won kind of thing, you know, because, you know, the, the, the Broken Lizard guys had, had a, you know, a record-breaking crowdfunding thing happening on uh, whatever, I can't even remember which, which platform it was. Having said that, these people that funded the film were on set all the time, and uh, it was very, very nice to see. It was very cool to be a part of. Sort of also in this age where they say we're sort of in, you know, self-publishing, but we're not really there yet. Uh, but it's great to see this entity over here reach the people that love their film and feel close to it and want to see another one. And of course, there's all the studios and you guys and everything in between, and and it, and it worked. And hopefully, that's the, you know, the future of a lot of media is is stuff that people want to see getting to them.